Welcome back to the Swift UI Bootcamp. I'm Nick. And as we start to wrap up this bootcamp and get into the final stretch of videos, there are some concepts that I feel are super important for beginner developers to know. So a couple of these videos are not going to be covering Swift UI specific components, but rather dealing and managing with certain concepts while making apps such as this one where we're going to cover the dark mode. So when we talk about light and dark mode, we're really just talking about the colors in our app because when we're in light mode, all it really is is a white background with black text. And when users have dark mode, it's the black background with white text. So when we're developing our app, we need to be very conscious of what colors we are using because some colors are adaptable and will switch with light and dark mode, but other colors, like when we explicitly put in color.black would not be adaptable. So in this video, we're gonna look at what colors we can use that are adaptable, that will actually change between light and dark mode. We're also gonna look at what colors are not adaptable. So colors that are gonna be static, like the same color, whether it's in light or dark mode. And then we're gonna look at a couple different ways that we can add custom adaptable colors into our app so that they do change for light and dark mode. So we'll look at how we can add global colors that are adaptable. And then we're gonna look at how we can locally adapt colors within our view. We're gonna use an environment object called color scheme and based on the color scheme, whether it is in light mode or dark mode, we will add logic into our modifiers to customize the color of whatever object that modifier is on. So overall, as an iOS developer, it is very important to understand how dark mode works because it is 2021 and most apps these days are supporting both light and dark mode. Welcome back everyone. Another quick easy video today. I'm in Xcode. Let's right click on the navigator, create a new file. And you guessed it, it's going to be a Swift UI view. And we're talking about the dark mode. So let's call this dark mode bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas. And let's get coding. So we're going to start this off very simply. Let's add a navigation view. Open the parentheses inside of the navigation view. We'll add a scroll view. And inside the scroll view, let's add a text. I'll just leave it saying hi for now. Uh, on the scroll view, let's add dot navigation title and let's make the title say dark mode bootcamp. And now in the scroll view, let's actually delete this text. Let's add a V stack, open the parentheses. We're going to add spacing of maybe 20 and open the brackets. And now in this V stack, we're going to add a bunch of texts with different colors. So very simply, we're going to say text. Uh, this text is primary and we'll make it dot foreground color dot primary. We'll do another one text this which let's do color is secondary and we'll do dot foreground color dot secondary let's change this from text to color i like color better let's do text this color is black dot foreground color dot black text this color is white dot foreground color dot white. All right, so immediately on a preview, we can see the phone is in light mode right now and it's got a white background. The title is black, which is the primary color. So we can see this color is primary. The primary color is actually black right now. This color is secondary. It is a kind of like a gray. This color is black, is actually black. And then this color is white. We can't see because it's white on white. Now in this preview, if we click on this little uh, computer icon here, I don't know what it's called, uh, and we go down to the color scheme and we change this color scheme to dark, and we look at our preview again, we can see that in dark mode, we have a black background, that title goes to white, and that's because the primary color, this color is primary, is white now. So we can see that automatically the primary color and the secondary color are automatically adaptive in light and dark mode. So the primary goes from black in light mode to white in dark mode. And that's why we can still see this color without changing this modifier. And I wanna point out here that when we explicitly put the foreground color as black or as white, 
that's not adaptive to light and dark mode. So we can see now the black, the black on black, we can't see that this color is black anymore because it's not adaptive. So the lesson here is that when you're adding colors, you need to keep in mind whether or not that color is adaptable, like the primary or secondary, or if it's an explicit color that's not going to change. So if we had another text saying this color is red, menu.foregroundcolor.red, we know that red is going to be viewable in both light and dark mode. So if I switch this back to light mode, we can still see red because it's red on white or red on black. But if we're using black or white, we know that they're not adaptive. So while red's not adaptive, we still can see it. So these are things we need to keep in mind when we're adding colors to our app. Now before we move forward, let's go down to the preview section here. And we can see that the preferred color scheme for our current preview is actually the light mode. And this is that modifier that we were just changing in our preview. So if we put this as dark, our preview would be dark mode. And in our preview, we can actually add a group and open the brackets. And in our group, we can add multiple previews. So I'm going to paste this dark mode twice. And the first one will do dot light. So now on the preview canvas, we actually can scroll up and down. We have our light view and we have our dark view. Just so we can go back and forth without switching the preview each time. So we need to make sure that our colors are adaptive for light and dark mode. So primary is automatically adaptive and that's awesome. Secondary is as well. But black and white are not. Red we can see no matter what because, because the background is white or black so we can always see it. And now let's add another text. Let's do text. This color is globally adaptive. And for this color, we're going to create a custom color. Now I've done this in my previous color video, so this should not be new to you. But I'm going to open up the project navigator on the left side. I'm going to go to our assets.xc assets. And in our assets.xc assets folder, I actually have this custom color already. And this is from the color video that we did a while back. But if you missed that video, let's walk through the steps again. So in here, I'm going to right click and add a new color set. And we need a name for this. Let's call this adaptive color. You can call it whatever you want. But while we're clicked on this adaptive color, we can see what color that actually is. So right now, for any appearance and for dark appearance, it's this white color. And we can change this. So by opening up the inspector on the right side, we can look in the inspector and we can actually change the appearance settings for this color. So if we turn it to none, it's then going to have the same universal color in light and dark mode. But if we put it to any and dark, it will now have a different appearance. This will be the light mode and this will be the dark mode. So in light mode, let's change this color. So in light mode, it is a different color. Let's click on show color panel. And in light mode, let's make it maybe like this teal color. And then in dark mode, let's show color panel again. And in dark mode, let's make it something totally different like yellow. So in light mode, it is this teal. And in dark mode, it is yellow. So remember, our color now is called adaptive color because we need to type this into our code now. So I'm going to go back into dark mode bootcamp. And for this color is globally adaptive. I'm going to call it foreground color. And here we're going to add in our new color. So we're going to color and we can use the name completion. And this color is going to be adaptive color. It's the exact same name that we added in the assets.xc assets. And let's resume it and check this out. We can see in light mode, our color is this teal. And when I go down to the dark mode, our color is this yellow, which looks awesome. So let's add a new environment variable at the top. We're going to do at environment. And we're going to open the parentheses and use a key path here. And it's going to be backslash dot color scheme. This will be a variable, so var. And we're going to call it color scheme. Now this color scheme is another environment variable that comes by default in Swift UI. So just like when we were doing segues a bunch of videos back and we did backslash dot presentation mode, 
This is the same except it's the color scheme. So every view in SwiftUI has a color scheme by default and this is basically either gonna be light or dark. So let's add another text here, we'll like text and we'll say this color is locally adaptive, exclamation point. And then we're gonna do dot foreground color. And in here we'll check whether or not the color scheme is light or dark. So we'll do color scheme and we're gonna use a ternary operator. So we're gonna do, so we're gonna check if the color scheme is equal to dot light question mark. So if it is in light mode, let's do dot green, otherwise dot yellow. So here we're just locally checking if the color scheme is light, put green, otherwise yellow. And if you're getting confused by this ternary operator, I have a whole video on this that we did earlier in this boot camp. Uh, but let's check it out now. Let's click resume. And now we are locally checking if we're in light or dark mode. So we can see that in light mode it is green and in dark mode it is yellow. So this color is locally adaptive. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how we can work with the light and dark mode. Uh, obviously the main thing in the light and dark mode is changing the colors. So if you're using a lot of the components like the tab view or the navigation view, they will adapt automatically because that's just how they are by default. But if you're adding colors to your app, make sure you're using adaptive colors if you need to, of course. So for example, this red, we didn't need to uh, because we can use red everywhere, but try to avoid ever using like white or black because that's not very adaptive. So we can create globally adaptive colors and we can create locally adaptive modifiers. So keep this in mind, of course, as you make your apps, there are some more advanced ways of dealing with the light and dark mode. And as we start developing full apps, I'll show you guys how we can set themes for our entire app so we don't have to actually deal with setting these colors each time throughout our app. But for right now, this should be a great start in dealing with dark mode. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, as always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.